Hey, Tribe. Hey. Welcome to another podcast episode joined by Jeffrey Smith and myself. Jeffrey, uh, actually, if you don't mind me sharing, Jeffrey just sent me pictures this morning. Grandson number two was born this morning, and he's he's uh, helping with different things, but he's here on the podcast tonight. So thanks for your commitment with that, Jeffrey. No problem. It's a lot of fun. That's really exciting. So basically, this is two friends talking. Um, Jeffrey, I actually did a fun little exercise. I didn't tell you about this, but um, over the last year and a half, I took a look at all of the people we have worked with, and we are at 104 uh, clients that have been coached over that time period. That's fantastic. So a lot of what we share on these podcasts is is kind of that collective wisdom of observation, of you know hearing outsiders struggle and seeing people um, draw a line in the sand. And what I want to kind of kick this off, we have three things we're going to talk about tonight that are tend to be massive missing pieces from a strategy perspective with insulin resistance and blood sugar. I'll I'll hit that, and then Jeffrey's done got some thoughts on a leptin reset and adaptive thermogenesis. But um, what I want to start off is just a real quick story. And when I, when I say those 104 people, that's, we're very humbled and we're very grateful. That's not to boast because this is the reason why Jeffrey and I do this. We both have full-time careers. We're not necessarily doing this for the money, although that's a nice perk, but we are, we are watching people's lives be blessed and changed. This, this has certainly changed and blessed my life. And same with yours, Jeffrey. And um, that's why we're doing this at the end of the day is to help people. And so many times people apply to work with us um, and they want to look better as, as a big driving force. They want the shirts and the suit to fit better. And then if we go deeper, they'll talk about their cholesterol issues and blood pressure and, you know, diabetes runs in the family and they're, they're worried about their health. And so obviously, you know, Jeffrey, you talk about this as people lose fat, they also lose hidden fat, which is the fat that surrounds the organs. And that adds years to their life. But the last thing I want to talk about what I call the heaven of all of this, not the hell, but the heaven is quality of life. And the quick story as we kick this off is just the other day, Jeffrey and I both live here in St. Louis. Um, in my opinion, we're kind of wimps when it comes to the weather compared to Chicago or other parts of the country, but we got dumped on. We got like, what, a foot of snow? Something like that. Well, our neighborhood got iced over and the plows didn't even come and, and hit the, the hill. And so I was, our house is literally right on the bottom of a hill. And so I was watching cars slip and it took me four attempts to get up this, this little tiny hill in my neighborhood. And finally I had had enough. And so I went out there, this was just on Saturday and I spent an hour at probably 160 beats per minute, just chipping away at this ice with a shovel and salting just these patches of this hill so that me and other cars could get up the hill and, and a light bulb went off and I realized if I didn't have my health and if I was bogged down and hundred pounds overweight, this is a representative example of what I would be missing out on. Basically having the energy to give back and to serve, and that wouldn't just show up in serving a community, but it, I wouldn't be going on bike rides with my kids, you know, or on the floor wrestling with the seven-year-old or et cetera, et cetera, you know. Jeffrey, you wouldn't be taking your little grandchild to the Ford dealership to look at trucks, right? Right. So really, this, this goes way deeper, um, having our health and our energy. We're talking about dreams being fulfilled, and we're talking quality of life. And that hit me as I was shoveling ice and knowing that, you know, car people wouldn't be getting in accidents because of that. Um so I don't know. Anything you want to add before we um, get into some of the uh, the specifics here around my story or thoughts around that? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of times when we're younger, particularly if we're involved with athletics, the fitness part just comes inherently. You know, we're, we're fitter, we're healthier, we're stronger. Um, 
in, and we don't necessarily pay attention to our nutrition because of our activity levels. Uh, and, and when we get into our 20s and our early 30s and, and life starts to change and sometimes our activity levels drop, unless you're a professional athlete or you're involved in fitness and athletics as a profession somehow, our eating doesn't necessarily change. And we, we get to these points where um, quality of life becomes inhibited. And sometimes it's not necessarily shortening our life, maybe, but it's, it's uh, preventing us from doing the things that we want to do. Like, you know, walking around with the grandkids or playing with the grandkids or simply what you just talked about. You got out because you're frustrated that there's ice on the road and you're stuck at the bottom of the hill. There's a lot of guys, and I know they're on your street and my street, that couldn't have swung a, a shovel or a pick, you know, for as long as you did to chip away at that ice uh, to make a difference there. And it's those little things that we, we forget about, but when we go to do it, we're unable to complete those tasks because our bodies and our health isn't going to allow us to do that. Um, and we don't want to, the, the, the goal with our program is to not have to bring us back to a, a set level norm using, um, you know, drugs and prescriptions from the doctors, but to develop a healthy, sustainable lifestyle through nutrition and activity to bring us back to that level of fitness that we that not only uh, maybe we, we're used to, but also that can help us start to achieve those little um, aspects of life that we're missing out on, the little fun things. So I, I think it's, it, you know, it's a, it, it, it's a, just a little bit of a, of a change in, in how we behave that can allow us to get back to those activities. And, and like you said, you don't think about it until you're out there chipping away at the ice. You, you're so right. And it, yeah, it's, it's not just, Hey, let's get you off the blood pressure medication and make your annual doctor's visits an actual pleasant, almost bragging conversation. I, I think star hall has had a, a really neat experience as a client, as a former blood pressure problem guy, and he got that fixed. So it's not right. just getting off the prescription meds and, but it's also not having to worry about buying ready-made meals and the next mm -hmm. magic pill and the next fancy gym membership and just kind of, kind of all of the band-aids, you know, let's, let's find a way to get rid of all of that. And through sound science and, and fueling our bodies correctly, let's let it heal itself and uh, become the best version of ourselves naturally without dependence on anything else. Yep. So I like that you said that. Well, why don't we get cracking here? Let me kick us off with what we call the Plagues of Prosperity. This is a fantastic talk that I'm, I'm going to give the Cliff Notes version of this, this message because every, every person who joins our program, we have them listen to this talk. And um, so I'm giving, I'm basically repurposing some information from Dr. Bickman He's recognized as perhaps one of the world's experts on one of the most common disorders in the world, which is called insulin resistance. And he gave this talk in 2018 called Plagues of Prosperity. A friend of mine gave it to me, and it's so impactful that we've, it's basically required reading for everyone who joins the program. And the reason why we're sharing this, and then Jeffrey, I'll flip it to you, is most people have tried the eat less, exercise more approach, and they know that's a ticking time bomb um, because they know eventually their hunger is going to get the best of them. And unless we go a little bit deeper, it becomes tricky to build a sustainable lifestyle and actually get results. And so we have 14 areas on one page that we help people focus on. Jeffrey and I are going to mention probably three of those tonight, just to help our audience what their appetite as to what they're missing. And so let me give just a few bullet points on, on this one, because it's, it's a massive miss that most of us are facing here. And Dr. Bickman, he says that 50% of people in the U.S. are insulin resistant. And what this what this really is, and we've talked about this on past podcasts, but when we wake up first thing in the morning, um, most of us, maybe we do some coffee or some cereal or some fruit, a smoothie, whatever it is, and we raise our blood sugar. And 
then we have a mid-morning snack and a lunch and a midday snack and a dinner and maybe some ice cream before bed. That Do you feel, Jeffrey, that that's a fair representation or at least directionally yeah. what, what the typical American's doing? Yeah. So what's happening is all day long, our blood sugar is going up and down like a roller coaster. And when we have sugar in our blood, it's toxic. And so insulin comes in and it pulls the sugar out of the blood and moves it to our cells so that basically that toxicity is fixed. Well, Dr. Bickman says that um, low testosterone affects 40% of men middle age and high blood pressure and elevated triglycerides, all of these things are a result or a byproduct of insulin resistance, of this process I just described. And he says, when our insulin is elevated, and again, half of, half of our listeners on this podcast are facing this problem. It's a massive problem. He says they're 40 times more likely to experience heart failure when our insulin is elevated. And he says there's also a direct correlation with Alzheimer's because basically what happens is over the years of us, our blood sugar going up and down and up and down, our, the insulin isn't nearly as effective. This process kind of gets tainted basically because we're not good at keeping blood sugar stable. And so he says getting sugar to the brain, glucose to the brain becomes a problem. And so he's, in his studies, insulin resistance is linked to Alzheimer's. And then he, but he kind of ends by saying it's also directly linked to body fat, which is really what we tend to focus on in, within the tribe because everyone's coming to us with body fat problems. And the other thing he shares is that when we keep our blood sugar level stable, it elevates our metabolism, which is something I had forgotten about. We talk about the thermic effect raising metabolism, but I had forgot that, and he explains that blood sugar being stable activates brown fat. We have, we have brown fat and we have white fat. Brown fat is very metabolic in nature. And so, you know, this, this is a very important principle. It sounds very scientific and complex, and, and it is. The nice thing about it from our experience is achieving stable blood sugar is pretty simple to execute. It basically involves making better food, better food choices around carbs, fats, and proteins. And then the, the carbohydrates that we do ingest making good choices in that department. And we, we show our clients exactly how to do this. Um, but that's some of the science at work. Um, someone who gets their blood sugar level stable, Dr. Bickman says, is it's going to have a massive impact long-term on developing a lean body composition. So let me pause there. That was a mouthful. And that's kind of the Cliff Notes version of this 40-minute talk that he gave. But uh, any thoughts that you've been in our program a good year and a half or so, Jeffrey, starting as a phenomenal client and shared so much passion. You became a kind of my right-hand man and a, uh, coaching some of our best clients. Your thoughts on implementing this firsthand and learning about this and teaching this to our clients? I think, you know, one thing I want to mention first, you talked about testosterone levels and that being a, a low testosterone being an issue in, in, you know, our demographic of men that we work with. And I think that's, that's really in, in a, uh, an underexplored area that most men, where they go to the doctors or they're talking to doctors or they're getting blood work done, they don't talk about testosterone and the levels of testosterone and the importance of having normal levels of testosterone. The problem with that, what I learned uh, with my doctors is that the range of what normal is for testosterone is huge. You know, there's probably, you know, I think 300 at the low end and 1100 or 1200 at the high end of being a normal range. So a guy with normal testosterone at the high range is seeing results as far as, as nutrition and physical results much differently than the guy that's at 350 at the bottom of the range, both still considered normal. So I think uh, it's very important to ask those questions and be more involved in 
how your personal testosterone level is affecting your specific physical goals that you're trying to achieve. Um, and finding doctors that are willing to listen to you and not just say, well, it's, you're in the normal range, so you're fine. Um, you may or may not be. And so I, I won't say a lot more about that, but I just think that's an important seed to plant that, that that's another aspect of all of this for men is testosterone plays a very, very big part in our ability to lean out, lose fat and achieve a healthy stasis that's sustainable. Yeah, you're right. And, and I found it interesting that Dr. Bickman, PhD, would, would talk about, you know, there's a lot of things that impact testosterone that we won't get into today, but that he gives, he gives a hint here that one of the things that does impact that is as we regulate our carbohydrates, um, again, we're not, we are not a low carb diet at all. Right. Um, we're not a keto. We don't, we don't believe in that, but as we make better carbohydrate choices and rely on proteins and fats, he says that that can help with testosterone essentially because, because insulin resistance is, there's a function there of testosterone problems. Mm -hmm. So again, who would, who would guess, unless you're a student of the game and you're researching from, you know, peer reviewed scientific articles, how, how would you know that um, as a busy working professional dad? And so that's part of what we're here is to right. guide people on, on time. These, this is an opinion. This is science. And either we obey these laws and get the result or we ign ignore it and do fads and continue the weight loss roller coaster. So, yeah, because we, we, we poke at it at, in the wrong ways to achieve the, um, you know, the, what, what, what the results that we decide we want to achieve we don't get them because the, our approach to this is attacking the wrong things. And sometimes it's one thing that needs to be adjusted that flips a switch in your body to make all the difference in the world. Maybe it's just increased activity, but it also could be a little bit of hormonal adjustment. And that can be achieved primarily through how we eat and how we move. Uh, it's not an, necessarily an injection or a pill. Um, there's a lot of things we can do with without having to introduce those type of uh, um, elements into our bodies. So I guarantee you, a very obese man in his 40s or 50s has low, low testosterone and whacked out insulin levels in his body. I can, I can almost guarantee those two things right there. Uh, so if we can solve those two things we can achieve a much greater result in bringing someone back down to what, what their body's norm really wants to be. And I love, yes, I, and I loved what you said though, because everyone's counting calories, right? Right. Or they're focusing on whatever celebrity's fat burning pill, right? Or the next boot camp, but no one is talking about hormones. No. Right. Unless you're a woman and you're thinking about menopause, you know, those types of things. Yes. But these yeah, these hormones are incredibly important. Um, and you're you're going to talk in this in a second about another hormone called leptin, the hunger hormone. You know, insulin is a hormone. Um, Testosterone is a hormone. All of these things play a massive role in our psychology. And it, so it's not just calories in calories out. No. And a lot of times. In, I, in my own experience, to even talking to doctors about um, weight and, and fitness levels, the, the, the basic answer is always in, you know, um, burn more calories than you take in. But there's never a discussion about the types of calories I should be ingesting and how I should be burning calories appropriately for, you know, what my body is going to allow. Uh, so when you skip all that, it's well, okay. Let's eat less cake. Let's eat. I'll eat three Big Macs instead of four Big Macs. That kind of mentality in there. I'm eating less, um, and you don't achieve those results that you you know that you're talking about. I do want to talk about you know uh, the the leptin hormone, but could you describe? You can do it a little better than I am. Exactly what leptin is, and yeah. how it works in the body, and then I can get into 
why uh, wh- wh- why we manipulate that. Yeah, sure. So, so, and I'm not a scientist. Um, so I, what I have done over the last 17 years is tried tried to gain a third degree, a third grade level of understanding on some of the, these basic scientific things, and that's why I explain it the way that I do. Uh, essentially, you have a leptin and you have ghrelin, which are associated with appetite in our body. And the reason why this matters so much is the typical diet is going to say, get in a calorie deficit. And over the next two to three months, you're going to lose 25 pounds of fat and you'll get a short term win. And it's very motivating. And that's great, right? You know, we try to do the same thing in our program. However, what's happening along, say, that 12 week period is as the weight comes off, the leptin levels are basically decreasing. Um, and hunger is your hunger cravings over time are going to keep growing because of that. But essentially, what's happening is your body thinks that it's in a famine because it's losing all this weight, just like people in, um, oh, what's the survival show? Um, I just drew a blink on it. We used to love it as a family, but, um, you know, these, these people are out in Alaska and they lose all kinds of weight because they're just hunting for food. Um, and anyway, so over time, the typical diet, you're, you're almost destined to fail because the leptin has dropped, your hunger has gone up and the likelihood of, you know, having 10 donuts just becomes astronomical at some point. Um, And also with that, your metabolism also starts slowing down because your your body realizes we are in famine mode. We're not in feast mode ever because we're losing all this weight. So is that is that kind of what you're looking for there? Yeah, exactly. Um, And and what we like to employ. So what you mentioned before was we are not, um, you know, low carb type diet. we put people into a calorie deficit for a period of time, uh, coupled with activities, uh, level increases and proper nutritional choices. So there is a caloric level that we're shooting for, but we are also looking at macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, protein, and micronutrients like potassium and sodium, uh, watching those type of levels as well. Sodium is a, is another component of this that we can talk about later, but um, it's another big part of what people miss when they're choosing foods and trying to develop a, a healthy lifestyle. Uh, sodium is one component that many, many people forget to pay attention to. So, you know, we can touch on that later. But we talk about putting people in a calories at deficit for 12 to 16 weeks and increase uh, activity levels. And we and we discuss having throughout those weeks, having uh, what we might refer to as cheat days, um, or we call leptin reset days. If you're in the fitness community or bodybuilding community, you might call them refeed days, depending on, on, on the vernacular you want to use. But basically what that is, is about a 20 to 30% increase in your calories on one or two days per week. And those one or two days are determined by a couple different factors. One, where your body fat percentage generally is at at that particular time and uh, how you've been eating throughout the week in general. Do you, do you need a refeed day based on your caloric intake or not? Not everybody needs a leptin reset day every single week, depending on what your goals are and, and how your body is responding to the nutritional intake that you currently have in your activity levels. But it's generally when it's implemented, 20 to 30% increase in calories. So, you know, 1800 calories a day, you go 20% above that is about another 360 calories. So you're a little bit over 2000 calories, maybe 2200 calories per day. So this isn't going into it like I have a cheat day where I can eat whatever I want as much as I want. It's not that. This is a moderate uh, monitored um, day of, of food intake that we throw some of the conventional thinking about our macronutrients and calories throughout the rest of the week out the window to allow your body to experience that leptin reset that allows it to feel like I am not in a starvation mode. 
and it and it will help prevent what I'm going to talk about in a minute that adaptive thermogenesis the plateauing that a lot of guys run into because they're in a calorie deficit for too long and they haven't implored this leptin reset day or their cheat days appropriately throughout the program to let their body realize I'm not being starved to death there's something here going on and generally at the, on those leptin reset days you're looking at a carb rich food day whole grains pastas rices those type of things to help fill out your day to get those additional calories in and again we may be only talking about another three four hundred calories we're not talking about a thousand extra calories in a day it takes 3500 calories of of junk calories to put on a pound of fat and we're not anywhere near something like that all we're doing is talking to the body in a certain way to allow it to understand what our process is here nutritionally, if that makes sense. So prioritizing carbs on that day, or you might have two days a week that you, that you do this with, then proteins behind that, and then fats as the last consideration, somewhere usually probably between 20 to 40 grams of fat total for the day even on a leptin reset day. A lot, of, a lot of our program is centered around high protein. So we're looking at high protein being our highest macronutrient throughout the nutritional um, you know, day of what, they're, what our clients are eating and carbs being you know, something that's a little bit more restrictive. Well, on this day, we flip the tables on that. Your carbs are a heavier consideration and your proteins are secondary there. And it's very important that we employ this. Uh, and I think there's a lot of guys that are afraid to do it because you think I'm going to wreck everything that I've done up to this point this week, you know, Sunday through Tuesday. And here is Wednesday and I'm going to add more calories to it, to this. And, and there's a fear that it's, that it's going to stall or upset the progress that they've made. And we hear that all the time. And I hear that from the guys in actuality, this is, putting a little bit more fuel onto the fire, that metabolism that we've fired up, that mo momentum that we've gained all week, this is actually an added boost. You're eating to lose is the, is the philosophy behind that. And that's not, that's not a, an original thought there. We hear that out there in, in a lot of diet communities and other, in other nutritional aspects. You eat to lose. You have to fire up the metabolism. You have to give the body fuel and make the body responsible for doing something with it. And if we don't do that, the body inherently becomes lazy. And that's where the adaptive thermogenesis comes in. You, people talk about plateauing. I'm in a calorie deficit. I'm eating 500 calories a day and I can't lose a pound. Well, your body has adjusted its, its metabolism to match your, your fuel intake and your activity level at that point. So it is now taking that where it's been highly active and there's been a lot of progress and it's matched what you're doing now. And it's expending exactly what you're putting into it. It's learned to live with the 500 calories. And that's sounds where that miserable. plateau comes into. <laughs> What's that? That sounds miserable. No, it is because you're working as hard. To, to achieve that you're, you're sacrificing, you're in a deficit, your activity level may even be, um, you know, to where it's, you know, you know, you're still working out hard to achieve your goal and nothing's happening because your body has now adjusted its metabolism to what you're giving it. So that leptin reset day, that refeed day is very important to, to let your body understand, ah, I'm not being starved. And I have to do something with these nutrients that they've just put into my body and therefore firing that metabolism up or keeping that metabolism momentum going into your next few days of calorie deficit. So generally losing weight equals losing muscle at the same time. If you're strictly talking about losing weight, you lose lean muscle at the same time and you end up in the, with that uh, effect of what we call skinny fat. You look great in your clothes, You've lost weight, you feel good, but you're not toned, you're not fit, you're not lean looking uh, underneath all that because you've lost that muscle tone along with 
the, the levels of fat, both subcutaneous fat, which is what you see underneath your skin, which is what people visually see. And when your face is fat, and your body's fat, you don't see the visceral fat that you talked about being packed in around the organs. The visceral fat that causes the health problems uh, around your organs, squeezing your heart, squeezing your lungs, squeezing your other organs, because there's no place for, there's only so much room inside you. And you only stretch so far. There's so much elasticity. And once you reach that point of not being elastic anymore, everything just gets smashed and squished, which is very deadly um, to more than, uh, you know, more cases than not. Um, so it's very important that as we move through these left and reset days and our activity level stays high, that we focus on also maintaining a certain level of muscle mass. And we've talked about that body fat ratio, you know, with some guys that are, you know, they get stuck in that body fat ratio doesn't seem to change, even though they're losing weight. Well, it's because that lean muscle is disappearing at the same time as the, the extra fat stores are disappearing. And so even if you keep that fat at one number, that fat weight, and you increase your lean mass by five, seven, 10 pounds, that body fat ratio now drops again without ever losing any more fat on your body. So the protein and the lean muscle becomes a very important part of reversing this adaptive thermogenesis in the long run. This is a very long game that we're playing. It's not a quick fix. And so when we talk about these changes and reversing this adaptive thermogenesis and uh, utilizing these refeed days, we're talking, three, six, nine, 12 months is what we're looking at. Not, I've got a reunion in, in three weeks. I've got a, you know, I need to look like I did when I played football in high school. That, that we can't do that. It's not, that's not possible um, in this, in the, in the way we do things to make that kind of thing happen. So activity levels are crucial um, to keeping your body from falling into this adaptive thermogenesis, I believe. Even in a calorie deficit, the activity levels have to stay high. And it goes back to that basic, sometimes annoying phrase from the doctors, you know, you burn more calories than you take in. That's true in this fact. We need to burn more than we're bringing in. But what we bring in has to be the right mix of macronutrients. And our activity level has to fit what our goal is going to be. And it, yeah, you, you nailed that, Jeffrey. I, I want to share just a, a thought or two to reaction to what you just shared and then maybe even close with um, what what we do that's different and better as a part of our coaching style and then kind of any parting words you might have and then we'll close up here. So the one thing I loved about what you said is let's map out a 12 month customer journey. We we learned Jeffrey, you and I both and Andrew are coaching that this had to be a 12 month transformational experience. And from, from what I have observed, that makes what we do extremely unique in this industry and different and better. Because like what you said, a lot of people can lose short-term weight in eight to 12 weeks, but that's just the starting point, right? If, if the typical client I would say has 40 to 50 pounds of fat to lose, some have a hundred, some have their skinny fat already, and they don't even care about losing weight. They just want to change their body composition. But anyway, the first 12 weeks is really, I would say actually three to six months for most of our clients, we are trying to shed the body fat. We're not, we're not focusing on weight loss per se, as much as we are let's get you lean mm -hmm. because of all the corresponding benefits of literally seeing the body fat percentage drop. And we send our clients a body fat scale and we have them track that weekly, right? Then it's generally maybe around the six month mark or it, it's different for every client. We have phase two, which is muscle growth. And it's exactly because of what you said. We don't, it's not transformational if we become skinny fat and we lost 30 pounds. That's not what our clients want. Mm -hmm. um, and they need time to then mix up their workouts. The fat is gone, but what do I do now? And it's so fun because for most of these guys, they've never been able to get the fat off in the first place in a sustainable fashion. 
and right. have it like run their life and live in the gym. So that's just the first phase. <laughs> and the veins start popping and the, 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 sculpt, the sculpting happens. But then it's like, okay, how do we, to your point, Jeffrey, how do we put on 10, 15, 20 pounds of muscle like what Lyle has done and what I've done? And that's a much slower process, but by doing right. it, it further drops the body fat, which that that's your baby. You are the one who helped us learn that. So that's I, what I'm trying to point out for our listeners is a phase one fat loss and a phase two muscle growth over a 12 month period it equals transformation and right. it blows people's minds. The other thing I want to talk mention here is when you talked about leptin, you did a great job there at adaptive thermogenesis. Something we have learned is that um, there's an emotional side to this. We talk hormones. Like I just had a hot fudge Sunday tonight. I'm traveling, I'm staying in a hotel and I had it from McDonald's and I was looking forward to that for days to reward <laughs> myself for, you know, being away from my family. And it was just under 400 calories. Right. And the, when we have an emotional reward to look forward to of strict eating, following a plan, the fats coming off, but just around the corner is a mindset and I'm going to reward myself or I'm looking forward to a Sunday dinner or in your case, tacos with your business partners, whatever it is, you know, we brought on a mindset coach, a professional psychologist who owns his own successful practice in Las Vegas, because we learned a lot of our clients have relationship with food problems. They binge eat, um, you know, they eat half the carton of ice cream at night. And so it's not just discipline. It's not just what are the missing pieces, like what we've talked about tonight. There's an emotional mindset component of this. And that's why we brought on this mindset coach to really help people with that. And so as, as I'm kind of giving some of my parting thoughts, I had a, I had a guy apply to work with us, Jeffrey, I didn't even tell you this story. Um, on his application, he, this is a, a negative story, but it, it paints an important point here. He watched our masterclass on our website, which is 20 minutes. It gives an introduction to insulin and some of these principles. And we show, you know, client stories, working professional dads is our niche audience. And he, on the application, he said, I didn't learn anything. You delivered no value. I already knew all of this stuff. And so we ended up canceling the call and said, well, here's our free podcast. I'm sorry, we're, we're probably not a fit. No, no harm, no foul, it's fine. We're not for everyone, that's okay. But the, what I learned from that is just because someone knows some of this information or all of it is very different with, from implementation and living it. What, what people are buying is a team and a community of people who are highly successful career guys, senior level career guys, who are actually implementing this. That's all that matters. It's, you know, we have 14 missing pieces and we've talked about three of them tonight. What makes this different is we, we provide one-on-one -on -one monitoring and analysis weekly for our clients, one-on-one. -on -one. And that, that is a huge, you know, Jeffrey, you'll never let us get rid of that. I've, you know, you're, you're adamant about that because it allows people to implement. And then a community of other guys who are just as busy as you and me, and some of them are millionaires or attorneys or VPs, directors, whoever they are, and they are making the time and the effort to implement this. And that provides motivation. And then I already hinted at this, but if you, if you truly want to have transformation in this area, we have to learn to stay on track when we're on vacation. Mm -hmm. And when we're traveling overseas or we're staying in a hotel, a lot of our clients travel like crazy. And we have to learn how to eat on the road correctly. And so the mindset coaching part of this and the strategy around that and eating dinner with kids who like mac and cheese, like all of this stuff, we, got, we have to be able to talk through this. And that is why our program is transformational in, in my opinion. I agree. I think, uh, and part of that one-on-one -on -one is talking the guys through these types of situations, particularly if you don't have a spouse that's, that's eating the same way you are. 
Um, sometimes there's a level of guilt. I'm not eating what's being cooked or I have to make something different or there's, I feel like maybe there's resentment because I'm not eating what the rest of the family is eating during this time frame. The important thing to remember is this is temporary. We're building uh, a plan to allow each individual to be able to pick and choose those, those meals and those, uh, those food items that allow them to integrate into these situations you know, where they can eat the meatloaf, they can eat the, the mashed potatoes, they can eat the tamales or the, or the enchiladas that are being made because their norm is strict healthy eating and living uh, outside of that. And so when you get to the mac and cheese that you want to share with your kids, it, there's no effect to your body other than your taste buds will change by staying away from some of this stuff over time and you may not like it as much as you thought you did but it allows you to to build that repertoire of of meals and items that you can eat and feel comfortable with the other thing i think is important to remember is the guilt factor some people carry when somebody brings them a treat holidays are a big big part of this you're going to a family event and your aunts made cookies and cakes and pies and all these things you're, and you feel obligated to eat these things you know um you're not obligated to eat any of it you could sample some of it you can participate in the activities we want you to because that's what makes life fun is being able to have some of these treats it's the overindulgence of this stuff where the problem comes in and you can lose an entire week of progress of fat loss um, and fall into that plateau, even if it's just for a few days, by overindulging for a day or two or, or a weekend um, and, and kind of ruin your progress that way. So I think it's important. That's one of the reasons the one-on-one -on -one is so important and the access to us, because we will talk you through how to navigate the trips, the buffets, the holidays, you know, the, all those things that happen all the time because they happen you know to all of us how do you navigate it successfully so that you don't lose ground yes that's well said so tonight as we wrap this up and just parting comments here you know we've talked about how this isn't just about looking better and feeling better but how this affects literally our quality of life and we've talked about insulin sensitivity and how important that is and a leptin reset thermogenesis you know um, what makes our coaching program different i think one of the closing thoughts that i would provide is you know the six pack dad tribe some of our clients want to have 10 percent body fat and see their their six pack their abs for the maybe for the first time ever in their life or since high school but more often than not what it, it's to your point just just a second ago, what they're really trying to do is they know that they've achieved professional excellence. And a lot of our clients have pretty good marriages and have kids and grandkids, but they feel and they know that they lack control over their eating. And they know that they're kind of lazy. And so in my mind, what the six pack dad tribe, it's, it's a metaphor. It's we want to help people achieve physical excellence. We want to help them achieve the discipline and the strategy to where they're not going to eat that half tub of ice cream at 10 o'clock at night and feel terrible and guilty with that. And what's neat about this that we've, we've seen quite a bit is as we learn to control our body and take better care of it, we tend to find other virtues of our life improving. Um, we find greater clarity of thought. And when we're not stress eating and we feel like we have more control, we tend to make better decisions. And um, then, then we hear about people going on hikes and achieving dreams and doing water skiing and doing these different things that they haven't done for many, many years because they've found a new level of discipline as it relates to their eating and their nutrition. And then that discipline translates into other areas of our, of the life. So really what we're not selling is fat loss. What we're selling is let's help you become the best version of yourself. Um, and that's, if, if we can help you guys, we would invite you to go to the website, 
the sixpackdadtribe.com. There's a free training section. Start there, and then uh, it it pulls up our calendar, and um, we'll we'll chat with you. Don't you do not have to make a buying decision on on the phone, and we'd love to chat with you. So, Jeffrey, any any final words of wisdom before we put this one in the books? I think you know every guy that sees this, it's worth your time to explore the program because we do it differently. Um, we do it with empathy. We hold people accountable. We have fun. And we've had 104 clients go through this program in one aspect or another, um, with the majority of them seeing significant success in the goals that they set for themselves. So it works. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for stepping away from important life events to <laughs> join me. Couldn't do this without you. And again, guys, if, if we can serve you, um, if, you're, if you're at a point in your life where the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. Now's the time. Go to the go to the website, the sixpackdadtribe.com. Check out our training. Look at the Hall of Fame and some of the other guys who are like you who are achieving this. And then let's jump on a call. So thanks again, Jeffrey. We're uh, signing off for another podcast episode. Thank you.